So welcome to Money's Designs. This is a live stream on uh, Impromptu Monday morning. I'm playing in the Colin Thompson Fantastique colour book. Uh, and I've completed a couple of pages in this book. Um, I did the, my first page was the Derwent uh, pastel, uh, Derwent pencils, but I used my little book of watercolours. So I had a lot of control so I can get a really watercolour effect. Um, and I've used pastels in here, I've used yeah, ink tents in here, um, gouache, so I've done quite a few different pages. This is pastel, and it's not set, it's done with a, a blending tool, so I'm having to put a piece of tracing paper between. And then I shall just put a very damp brush just over the top. Um, that's Inktense Pencils, that was Inktense Pencils as well. Um, I think I'm going to do this one in gouache. That one's Derwent Watercolour Pencils. There is a gouache one which I quite, quite, it worked quite quickly, that's Pastels. That's Inktense Pencils. I find I quite like using certain things. Um, I started the back page in, um, I think this one was Derwent Art Bars. Oh, thank you, May. I can't remember what this is. So I'm going to have to go back and find the video because I can't, I can't remember. I think it's watercolours, but it could be ink tents. But I did put sparkles on the Christmas tree. I just cannot remember. I've have put, I've written Derwent watercolour pencils from paper palettes. Oh, so that's probably what I did. That's Derwent pastel pencils with a brush blended instead of so instead of using a blender I was blending with a brush there and that's this one's gouache this was fairly quick to do so I've used lots of different uh, water-based mediums in here so I quite like that and uh, but I did love the pastel effect on this one um, so I'm going to work with um, I, I have set, um, I do have a, a new, oopsie, sorry, I nearly stood on the dog. <laughs> I have a new box beside me, which is quite big and may have to move slightly, sorry, bark alert, may have to move it slightly to one side because uh, it is rather, rather big. Um, but I acquired for an early birthday present and it's a bit blurred, a vintage pastel box made by Rowney. Um, it does have its glass missing, so I'm going to have a piece of glass that I can, I've got things on top of it. But I've got pastels in here, and then on the top layer, which if I can just move, uh, we had a bit of a disaster this morning. Uh, we had no power. So if I move that to here, you can see I've got my oil pastels all in the top. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to, to using those. Um, so I've got to get a piece of glass because they will get they will get dusty. So um, I'm going to have a play a bit later with some oil pastels. But I thought I would do these in pastels and then kind of grunge them up a little bit because I've acquired quite a lot of browns and, and grunge things. So I'd already written what I wanted to do on there. Sometimes it's a good idea to go through and have a look at certain pages because they give you an idea. You, and you can always rip it off and change your mind, which I do quite often. But I think I'll stick with pastels. I think I quite, and I'd, I'd originally put pastel pencils. Um, but I actually kind of fancy using pastels. So I'm going to have to have quite a lot of baby wipes out because it's going to get quite dirty, messy work. And it's it's always 
it's not difficult but you've got to keep your hands clean with pastel but what I'm going to do is so using a blender I am going to just put a, put a bit of color on and I'm going to manipulate it with a damp rigger and I like working this way because you can have a watercolor effect and I love pastels because they're the nearest thing to pure color you can get so they have very little binder in them so I've got the Dale Arrowney uh, rigger so that's not very well I've got a number three two one and a ten zero art master pearl 55 and it's quite a thin one is that for the little tiny doorknobs and little tiny spaces so welcome to Bunny's Designs this is a live stream recorded for Ustream.tv and also, you, also recorded for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure um, just go through what I'm going to use I've got a little lid here so this is where I'm going to be dunking in and it was a, a face cream so I'm dunking into here and then I shall be um, drying the brush to just be a damp on a baby wipe on the lid and I find that works quite well and so you can kind of dunk to one side and then twist to a point and then you have a very damp but barely damp rigor which is just nice enough to keep from your pages buckling and just enough to actually make a watercolour effect for whatever kind of water-based medium you put in a small space you can then manipulate it to get a watercolour effect without a lot of water and it took me two years to, to, um, to get this effect uh, and I called it watercolouring because you are colouring in a book and uh, that's why I, I called it water coloring and basically you are coloring on a normal piece of paper in a color book but you are having a watercolor effect that you would normally have to have um, a water brush which I just kind of put my hands on at the moment that's one it looks very similar to that but that isn't it but basically when you flood the page with water and the color is then put into it but of course we don't want to do that because these are just ordinary pages but there's nothing to, to, for you not to get some watercolor paper and if you can get it to go in your printer you can print this out um, as long as your ink doesn't run and then you could use it as a watercolor or you could trace it there's lots of things to do So um, I've got, I'm going to start in the top corner. Mind you, I don't actually have to start in the top corner because by using the rigger with a damp water, what I am going to be setting this. So it's going to literally be a pastel, but the minute it has it's activated the water, it will become a normal watercolour. And when it's dried, you can move it about. It won't move about if you smudge it. That's what I mean to say. Um, and I found just looking here this really pretty purple so I can't make my mind up if I want to do bright doors or grungy doors so um, to see. So I spent quite a long time going through all the pastels and sorting them out um, I can lift one out at a funny angle so they're all near as damn it in color order and I did have um, one set from Dale Rowney sorry one, one set from Rowney an original vintage set of pastels and I think it was 1980 something that Rowney became Dale Rowney um, but I love the fact that these original Rowney pastels are in an original Rowney box <laughs> it's kind of made my day that so I need I definitely need a baby wipe and possibly a kitchen roll as well because this is going to be a bit messy <laughs> but I love these colors I've got Conti pastels hard pastels soft pastels medium pastels the only ones I didn't put in here are the the Derwent pastels and the Inktense blocks I probably will when I kind of get my I didn't realize I had so many pastels I thought I just had one or two but I kind of filled most of the trays so I need to obviously get through but there's going to be some really kind of um, 
grungy browns and, and lots of different tones so it should be quite a nice page to play on um, and I'm going to pick on that one first I think no I'm going to pick on this one first so I'm going to zoom in and again picked up the pastel and then got it all over my hands so it's definitely messy work now if you have asthma you really should be outside so we'll see how well this goes um some days i can play with pastels <clears throat> and some days i can't but i'm not <coughs> excuse me i'm not using them in a traditional way i'm just using a tiny bit of color and there's no tooth to this paper whereas when you use pastels uh soft pastels in a traditional way you have almost like a sandpaper type paper to work on and this grips all lots and lots of dust basically so it's a lot dustier now i do plan to do that but i will be doing it outside and then hopefully that will keep the air a bit cleaner <coughs> <coughs> excuse me the mere mention of dust and i'm off <laughs> So I'll do the first one and then you can see what I'm doing and then I'll zoom in. Um, so I'm going to pick on this one, I think. So I found this colour and I really don't know what these colours are because they're kind of kind of dirty. Oh, that's a brown. So they're really kind of grunged up a bit. So if I put a little bit of this colour again in that cross hatching because it's a grey scale, which is always good. And a bit on the top there. <coughs> Excuse me. And I can look in my pastels and see if I've got kind of a, a paler kind of tone. Maybe a darker tone. It's completely different, is that one? Now these look like the inscriber, the really. S <coughs> Excuse me. There's actually a paler color so I'm going to put some of that next so I'm going to clean my fingers and then I'll zoom in and we can see what we're doing <coughs> so I'll be testing and then I'll be taking the brushes and manipulating that little bit of color so I'll just <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oopsie, that's not what I wanted to do. So I'll just uh, zoom in and then refocus. Oops, sorry. Ooh. My focusing skills have kind of disappeared just recently. I think that's okay. Let me just put that in front and see what happens. That's better. <coughs> So I think I'm going to use um, I think I'm going to use the number the number one brush I think so dunk the brush twist it to a point and then I'm going the palest first and manipulating that to make kind of a nice watercolor effect and now I haven't done this for a while so not sure how it's going to pan out i think i might do the rule of three actually and i'm going to use the bigger brush i'm going to use the number three brush because it's a slightly bigger space and i need to kind of manipulate it fairly quickly but basically that's just dust sitting on there because there's nothing for it to grip there is definitely nothing there to grip. So 
so we can kind of bring that down. And I originally got the idea for this, for using pastels, before I even bought the pencils. Because I couldn't use um, any other kind of pencils, coloured pencils. Um, and I was playing with pastels in a colour book and thought how I really, really liked the bright colours. And yet, I'm not blending several different pencils, uh, which I couldn't do with my hands. So that's why. Um, and then at three o'clock in the morning, I was still playing, thinking, oh, I kind of like this. I can still colour. That's good. So um, at three in the morning, the Gremlin, the Amazon Gremlin made me buy the 72 went pastel pencils. Now it is a little bit thicker <clears throat> is this this paper is a little bit thicker. Um, now I do need a little bit of, uh, of colour on there so the other thing you can do just like anything else is just steal a little bit of colour but it will be stronger, so you've got to remember that. And the other thing we've got to think about is we've already touched that with water, so we're doing a kind of damp on damp, which a lot of colour books do not like. Now, luckily, this is a bit thicker. Um, and now I do actually want a tiny bit of... And the light isn't really good. But I do want the tiniest bit. I think I might actually blend it, I think. I think. I'll see if I can use the blending tool. My fingers are really bad today. but I kind of like the rule of three. Um, but most of these doors look kind of really grungy to me. So doing a pristine white door isn't probably an option and there's some really nice dark cold nutty browns in there so I kind of like that idea so that one's done oh yes we'll do mate thank you <clears throat> when I use well I don't know if it's the proper rule of three um, but what I used to do is if sometimes you can put too many colours in. So what I like to have, um, I'll just pan out and uh, thank you for that, May. Thank you because I'm uh, I'm very scatterbrained and um, if I get on a tangent, I'm away. So I'll just pan out for a second because that's going to that's dried and it's fixed as well. Oopsie. And this is why this is what I did first with the rule of three. Again, playing with pastels is when I find it, come out, come out, wherever you are. I try to put a label. A pink label there it is so the rule of three is having um, a, a mid tone a darker tone and a highlight or how I use so how I do it is you've got a red and so we've got a dark red and then we've got a, a ready red and then we've got an orange and if you look on the color oops and the rule of three works sorry about that by using three that are closest together on the colour wheel. So instead of using a green, a red and a blue, that's three colours. But they won't be as in harmony as three colours that are next to each other. So these are a bright red, an orangey red and an orange. And that's just what I've got. 
and that's the rule of three. So what you could have is an orangey red, orange, and a yellow, a yellowy orange. Or you could have orange, a yellow orange, like a yellow ochre, a gamboge, and a bright yellow. And I used the same technique for think which one it is for mythomorphia <clears throat> for the, the dragon's um, flames there's a red in there there's an orange and a yellow um, and this particular one we have three images of it so Again, this is the same, red, orange, and yellow. Here, we have a bright yellow, a medium yellow, and an orange. There's no red in it, because I've got a lighter yellow. Um, if I could do this with the picture. So they're both a rule of three, but here we've got a dull, a, a kind of a warm yellow, an orangey, and a red. And here we've got a bright yellow, a warm yellow, and an orange. But it still works the same way as the rule of three. And so they need to be next to each other on the colour wheel. <clears throat> so you could have... Um, a green, a greeny blue, and a bright blue. Or you can have a greeny blue, a blue, and a purple blue. So as long as they're all touching together in the same group near each other, three colours, you're going to get a really nice harmony. And um, as I understand it, but I might be wrong because I'm a bit of a lunatic, it's called the rule of three. But whatever it is, I used it on here. <laughs> Three colours next to each other on the colour wheel. So um, the other way you could do it is not using the rule of three or using the rule of three with white. I think I used it on this first page. So I've got a dark pink, a pink and a white. And then you've that's you've got your highlight. But actually, I think I prefer this. It, it just makes it more more realistic so hopefully that made sense I don't think I've used it anywhere else and that's why some some bright colors work together and some don't because of the rule of three so in here I wanted a dark brown um, a lighter brown and then a fawn but they're still they would be next to each other I haven't gone for a, a, a pink a blue and a brown kind of thing uh, and greens quite a grungy green is is kind of like an olive green that would work well with brown because it's near together it's next to it and sometimes you just get that harmony and it works quite well um, I'm using probably, so if I do a green door, I'll have three different tones of the green. I'm doing this slightly different, but um, this one will stand out. So I would use, um, and this particular box is really good because what it's, it, it does is actually put them in in different tones. So I think. They're all turquoises. There's a pale one, there's a medium one, and a dark one. Now, that's not the rule of three. That's just, you know, that's probably your main colour. And instead of adding white to get that, and adding its complementary colour to get that, I've just got all three. That's another way of doing it. Um, I'm not sure if these are going to be a bit brighter, so we can have a look. There's a blue, and then... As a bluey green and then we've got a darker tone so actually that would work quite well 
this I'm just working working through the pastels I'm picking three colors together so it's not necessarily the rule of three for this particular thing so maybe I should sc scrub this video and not say anything about the rule of three um, but it's just another way of working so I could do that little door there that's obviously got to be wooden because it's wood but I mean there's nothing to say it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be that color um, so the other way to do pastels and I might as well play about with this is this is the lightest so where I want it to be the lightest which is obviously on the door but bear in mind these are all different pastels and they're all different grades and they're all different prices oh thank you May. thank you um, so I'm going to put a little bit of this to the darkest where the darkest is and then the medium one I'm going to put and I'm actually going to cover this all the way over because I'll show you why in a second now the thing with this oops I want to pay this one there the thing with pastels whether it's pastel pencil or pastel in a color book you do not have the same control because it's a color book And there's no tooth so really you shouldn't use them but if you just put the tiniest amount on there it will work and I just have to get sorry Alfie, I just have to get keep my pastels in my Derwen art bar bag and <clears throat> The second I get out of my chair, we have an Alfie. <laughs> Suzanne's not here yet. Uh, don't get comfortable, mister. Can we come out, please? Alfie, can we come out, please? <laughs> out. Good boy. He says, no, I'm here now. That's me. <laughs> come on, good boy. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. I only stepped across the room. He's just a terror. So I keep my. I've got to be careful because that's. I keep. I, might, I may actually play with these. I think actually. This is my favourite blending tool. I bought lots of others, but that's the one I use. I also use um, an electric eraser. And the dud ones I keep for other things, but the sharp edges are for highlights. And um, I don't tend to, I don't tend to, um, I might just keep those out, they're tiny ones. I did buy some from a shop and was so disappointed because they looked like this. And when they arrived, they were tiny. <laughs> uh, they were tiny. They were this size. I read exactly what was on it and they're, so they're too soft they're no good that's exactly what it says on mine but I wanted instead of a number six so I was a bit disappointed but hey ho never mind you get what you pay for and they were quite expensive actually but completely and utterly useless but never mind. <laughs> um, so I keep my pastels my pencils in here and I might start playing with these again because I love them actually and my when my hands are bad I can resort to those so that's quite good that's what got me there in the first place so I'll zoom back in and you can see what I'm doing hopefully <laughs> yes May you can say that he's cute but only when he wants to be. <laughs> He's a terror. He's a terror. So, sorry about this. I'll, I'll zoom back in. Here we go. Now, these pages are really easy to do 
and let me see if we're actually in focus. Oopsie. Ah, there we are. So this is a taper point color shaper by Royal Sovereign. And it's a number six, and it's but it's really hard. All the other ones are soft, so I can't work with them as well. Because remember, these will be fine if you were using one traditional pastel paper, but we've got a shiny surface, and in theory, it shouldn't work. But if you just have the tiniest little bit of colour, and then you use this blending tool to blend. So you start with the palest first. And kind of blend all that in. And then we've got... Now that's completely saturated the page but what you can do is you do get two chances with the pastels we can erase and you because it's not been set once you've wet it it's dried it's set but while it's just been blended in you can erase any little bits that they don't show too much because it's a pale color and you have another trick which was in the Harry Potter one. Now the only thing with this is it takes a long time. It takes a long time if you're doing them like that. So. Maybe Hagrid's page is not in here. No. It's going to be the last one, isn't it? Yep. This one, oops, took quite a long time to do. Um, probably nearly 10 hours, I would think. Because it was done in exactly the same technique. But there, is, there are, I think there are eight, eight videos for this. And they're all about an hour long, one to two hours long. But it was the same, it was taking a little bit of colour, dotting it and completely filling the space, blending it with a blending tool and then I did the whole page. So I had to be careful I didn't lean on it because it was all just blended in. And then I managed to get a little bit of dark and, um, and highlight so that that's going to bring the cottage forward because when I finished it, it was completely flat. Um, and that's how you do normally a painting is you will finish it and then you will play with it and bring things forward and put things back. And that's how I managed to get the little tree stump and the little the little outhouse and the cottage forward and push these. I put some very darks behind just around this area. So it's going to push the forest back, but bring the cottage forward don't have to do that here but when you've got just an ordinary page you you need you've got one layer and that's normally it but what we can do because it's a color page is we can probably get um, if this is the right green we're, we will get one more layer, just one more, just to get some more dark in there. I 
And now that page is completely saturated. And the other thing to do now is to just give it a bit of a highlight. I want to give it a highlight somewhere. So it's not. And then I did have a little brush, but I used this fan brush because you do not want to smudge it. And then you can either do this now or do it later. So I'll pan back in again. It's a bit bitty today. I'm terrible when I get going. How are we for focus? That's not so bad. And then what we do is we take just a barely damp brush and just very carefully once all the way over the top so there's two ways and you get very similar effects this is very quick and this is a kind of a bit more um it's a bit more in depth so you can get some a lot better effect if you do this one this is just a quick way and this is this is to get more in depth if you want to Bear with me two seconds. Oh, hi, Claudia. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. So welcome to Bunny's Designs. Oopsie. <clears throat> so let me just think. I need to just. It looks quite blurry, but it isn't. I think it's just the actual drawing, isn't it? So. Um, this is some kind of cool browns on here so again a bit of a test because that's a cold kind of browny gray but that's quite a nice one so i think i'm going to go for this one it's more of a gray is that so i'll warm it up in a minute and um, we'll have that down there and then we'll put this dark into there This is a Derwent graphic. I've got all sorts of colours in here. This is a an original. Yes, that's going to warm that up quite nicely. So because it's a pastel, you can scratch on top if you want and warm that up. I mean, you can put as many many colors as you want now the round ones are normally softer I mean that's quite a dark color there By doing this, you're going to get a lot more contrast. And you've got to remember to clean your fingers because that's why <clears throat> the Derwent's put the pastels in a pencil because it's dusty, dirty work. And obviously, artists wanted to play with these fantastic colours but didn't want to get the fingers kind of messed up all the time. I get that 
started the wrong way around, but we'll get this dark in there first. Now, being wood, we should really go with the flow, the direction of the wood. But Don't panic if you get it somewhere you don't want it because it's going to be able to come off straight away. The doorknob wants to be a shiny metal, as does the hinges, I think. Or I may do them black. Yeah, I can't do this particularly well today. I haven't been able to use this blending tool for quite a long time. I just can't grip it, so that'll be the last one I do with this. So I did put quite a lot on, so I've got quite a lot of... Um, I've got some dusty bits there which I want to brush off. Now normally I have a baby wipe at the top, so that all the dusty bits <clears throat> go straight onto there, and then they're not kicking about the desk. So I need... Um, Actually, I want that black or silver, so we'll take that off and anywhere else. And remember, you've got to be a little bit careful because I'm going to take that off there because I don't want it on that either. And this one. And then I do want a little bit of dark. Um, so I'm just going to put I think that can actually stand quite a lot of dark. And I think I'm going to do this dark as well, because I think some of them were dark. Thank you, Diane. A tea would be good, thank you. So I've got brown on here, so I don't really want brown on here. So again, a bit of a... The easiest way to do this is have the baby wipe on your desk and just stroke it and you'll find it comes off beautifully. So, um, I've got this little tiny one but I don't really think I like it but it might just do the trick. Now obviously if you're working on pastel paper you can get such fine detail. And make sure that it's dried and not wet and then you can blend that dark in. So you can just get one layer of main colour and then you can get a highlight and a dark. But you can't get any more. It's not like traditional ways where you can get about 10, 15 layers. You don't have that here. That's all you've got. So you need to get it done in one. And then you can go in there with a the highlight. If you need a a bit of a highlight anywhere. And 
now is the time to get everything off that you want because <clears throat> excuse me brush gently don't brush with your fingers because that will smudge all that hard work you've done you might just get tiniest kind of bit more shadow under there Thank you. Sometimes you can and sometimes ow, you can't. So that's gone now. Just I kinda like the idea that that's kinda really kinda dark under there. But basically all that's happening is it's being rubbed off a little bit more. And then when it's completely as you want it, just a damp brush. Uh, where's my number three? Is it? Just very carefully because you will mix if you rub too much you will start to mix the colors together and we don't want to do that this is instead of using fixative so you're fixing your color now you can go over it there's nothing to say you can't go over it once you've fixed it normally just go over the whole thing but I'm just going to do this this time because it is kind of ground in there I've just done that bit it is kind of ground in there because you've used the blending tool But now it would be more difficult to manoeuvre that because it's now set as a watercolour. Oh, thank you, Claudio. So that's a little bit more. Um, and in a minute, I can do that and it won't come off because I've set it. Um, but that's instead of using nasty fixatives. So you can use it. Now, because my hand's really bad... I can't do this really that way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pastel pencils I did think that might happen because I used my hands yesterday a little bit and it was a bit silly because <laughs> the advantage is I will not get dirty fingers um, but that's why I can't finish that other side I cannot use um, the blending tool because you have to nip the blending tool and kind of rub with it and that's the same action as using as using a pencil so I find that extremely difficult at the moment so I'm just going to use my pastels um, and I keep them in my art bags and I'm going to use the vintage set because they are very soft and they remind me of traditional pastels because they're very soft very very soft and you can see how soft they are so they're very much like soft pastels and the Derwent uh, and the other make of pencils are very much like the kind of a little bit harder pencil and Derwent haven't made this uh, particular one for quite a long time because obviously people wanted a harder past a harder pencil so they've reformulated so the binder is a bit stronger in the new in the new ones and the this is the new set so I'll just pan out a second I'm doing lots of panning apologies
so the traditional these are the new set which is they're marked p i think they're p 70 sum until um da, da, da. p10 to p720 um and there's indigo there's all the same colors very similar colors i've matched them up there's a couple of videos but this is the pencil you buy now and this one if you notice there's hardly any chalk marks at all because the binder in the new pencil and this one uh, somebody did a comparison with other makes of pastel pencil and uh, the Faber Castell and they came out almost identical but the vintage set that they don't no longer make from Derwent they're a little bit fatter and the strip is a bit uh, thicker if you can see there's more pastel so I I class these as like a soft round pastel and the new dough the new pastels as a harder pastel that's the easiest way um, oh hi Bob, welcome to Benny's Designs, anybody else popping in? See, I think I've done something to chat, not sure what I've done, it's, 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 it's <laughs> Ooh, let me just see if I can, uh... so I'm going to, what I'm using is, I'm going to be using these pencils, so I'll go back in there and then can see what I'm doing I'm just going to get rid of my little and I'm just going to put test in there to see if I can rejig it it's no it's still not perfect isn't yeah I think I've frozen so let's have a look oh no that might be better Hopefully that's okay. It just seems to be jumping about rather a lot. So thanks for joining me, guys. I'm going to have a bit of a, a play. I've been gone actually that's for 50 oops that's a 50 minute one with a lot of natter <laughs> so I was going to stop this video and then I'll start another one because I think I think it's it's probably not very good it's taken me a long time to get into it this morning <laughs> so thanks for watching